So, I think it's interesting that you've been doing all this uh, video production, and then how, how did you evolve from that to writing a book, and how did you choose the topics? Well, um, working with Discovering Alabama, working with Dr. Doug all these years, you know, it's given me the opportunity to be out all over the state of Alabama, and, and I mean, you know, as well as I do, what a fascinating diverse place we we live in here and it's, it's just remarkable and um, in my when when I was when I first began working with Doug on discovering Alabama I saw that my kids were bringing home they were in elementary school the the, the, the reading lists they had were all they were some good stuff you know from to kill a mockingbird to you know all, the, the good books but there was nothing that was set in the world that I was working in for discovering Alabama, not the natural history, and and not right here in Alabama, and uh, you know at the time my daughter was a huge Harry Potter fan. You know that's when all the Harry Potter craze was going on, and and like everybody my age, I grew up reading you know Ray Bradbury and and all the great science fiction writers and fantasy, and we all love that. But I just wanted to put something in the real world, you know, an adventure. I didn't want it to be. Uh, Teachy, you know, <laughs> I just wanted the kids to have fun in the woods, and that's why I wrote Longleaf, and, and that worked out pretty well. So I wrote Space, and then I wrote Time. And, uh, and so, in terms of uh, age range and basic reading ability, I know all kids are different, but what's like your target audience? Well, the, the target audience is fifth, sixth, seventh grades around in that in that range, you know, the, the precocious third graders and, and, and uh, but it's really, they've, I've, I've been amazed at how the adults take to the, to the books because it is just a fun time in the woods, you know, it's, it's not a high morality tale or anything, we don't, there's not a lot of angst, but um, it's just your classic tales of kids running from the bad guys in the woods and and there's and they're the real woods they're the places in alabama that you can go and see and you can touch and it's it's there all right yeah, i'm sorry you're gonna have to do a little bit more detail than running away from the bad guys in the woods get into a little can you can you touch on a story a little bit well um the the the, the way i set everything up is is my main character jason caldwell um, his parents, his mom's a biologist and his dad is an astronomer. And so he gets to follow them on some of their uh, explorations, if you will. And um, um, that's what brings him to Alabama. So he's kind of an outsider. And when he gets here, you know, he's a little bit of a know-it-all kid because his parents are smart and he knows some biology, he knows a little astronomy. So he's got a good reason to be a little book smart. But when he comes to our state, he has to also learn how to be smart, you know, lost in the woods. And that's where, uh, you know, the, the local characters come in. Leah, the girl that he meets down in the Kanaka National Forest, and um, she kind of saves the day for him a, a little bit. Sweet. But, uh, uh, and, and, you know, just like that. He comes to, he comes to our state, and he, he finds out how wonderful we are, and then... <laughs> And, and gets in trouble, and and uh, but that's that's where the adventure comes in. And uh, what are you mentioned Kanaka? What are some of the other places? And I mean, half of this is it's almost like a travel show in a way. Uh, what, what are some of the places that you've covered? Well, uh, Longleaf is set in the in the Longleaf Forest of South Alabama. It's in Kanaka National Forest specifically. Um, space is set surprisingly in Huntsville. Okay. Uh, it's at the Conrad Swanson Observatory up in uh, Montesano State Park, and it, that's where I grew up. And when I was Jason's age, 14, I would, was at that observatory many, many, many uh, weekend nights, and uh, so I, I remember it, you know, observat observatories don't change that much. And, and then uh, time is actually set um, in the mid middle part of the state, at, just outside of Jasper, at the Stephen C. Minkin, at the Stephen C. Minkin Paleozoic Footprint Site, you know, say that three times fast, but it's one of the uh, most remarkable sites in the world for uh, Paleozoic footprints, tiny amphibian footprints and trace fossils. I worked with Congressman Adderholt to make that happen. 
got them out there the first time. It was uh, I, I blown away by the place. And, and my daughter, by the way, found one of the most spectacular footprints. And uh, I, I said, oh my gosh, you got to show that too. I forgot what professor was there. And I said, and she said, no, I, I threw it back. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Oh, all right, sorry. Uh, one one last thing, and that would be, how did you go from doing what you're doing to sitting down with whatever it was, a pen, a typewriter, a computer, and actually start your first project? Well, Did you know that you were going to do it, or does it well, kind of evolve? You know, the the, uh, the truth is, when, I, when I've, I'd never written a novel before. I've done TV for a long time. I've worked with Discovering Alabama for 18 years now. And, um, well, let me rephrase that. I've worked with Discovering Alabama since 1996 now and uh, and did TV before that. So uh, when I sat down to write my first novel, I read a chapter to my daughter each night and if she wanted another one, I wrote another one. And that's how I worked my way through the first book because I, I didn't, you know, I was just kind of feeling my way to see see how it would work, you know. And I, I but all of the books have been really an outgrowth of the work that I've done with Discovering Alabama. You know, we've done shows on the Minken site, we've done shows in the Conecuh, shows on the space program in Huntsville, so. Um, and we've done a lot of shows I haven't written a book about yet, so I, I need to get cracking. Yeah, don't forget Little River Canyon. <laughs> well, that could be next. You know, you, you can get lost in that canyon. Oh, yeah. But you can only go in one or two directions, <laughs> unless, well, unless you count down. Yeah, it would be a bad day. Uh, anything else that you want to uh, highlight or, or bring up? Well, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, uh, you know what you've got here at Little River Canyon the, and the, and is it's just incredible. I, I was out on the trail here today and met a woman that was in our coastal shows, who's fish and wildlife uh, down in at the Bon Secours Wildlife Refuge. So she's come up here to see us, and you know, we we've, we've done shows just last year down there. So it, 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 we live in a special, special, special place, and and we get outside and see it. Yeah, when when space came out, uh, uh, I got to I, I went back and we did the kickoff at my old at Davis Hills, the old. Right. Uh, so that was the coolest thing to go back to the old school. And I, my, my NASA buddies came from; they had vetted the book for me. And my Longleaf guys that had vetted the first book came up. It was a really big, big deal. It was, it, it, it was neat, you know.